Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming on to our webcast. I'm Jonathan Edelheit, CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. And we're going to be giving you an update on new partnerships and initiatives at the World Medical Tourism and Global Healthcare Congress, which takes place in a couple weeks, September 20th through the 24th in Washington, D.C. Um, excited for this year's event. And I'm going to go into some slides, a little bit about the conference, um, uh, you know, in, you know it's, uh, what happens at the conference, um, also what's new for the conference, um, and some new initiatives and things that we're doing. For those of you who are, um, you know, new to the MTA that are on the call, I see that many of you are old friends of the MTA. Uh, the MTA was founded in 2007. Um, you know, we have 15 regional representatives. Um, we work in over 100 countries around the world with ministries of health, tourism, economic development. Um, healthcare providers, hospitals, insurance companies. We're working with the media on an international basis, supporting medical tourism, educating um, you know around the world, you know from CNN and Fox News and Bloomberg to international periodicals and magazines and newspapers all over the world. Um, you know we have uh, I see we have uh, France surgery on the call, and um, you know excited to. Uh, I think at the end of this we'll be playing a little video of the CBS News story um, that the MTA put together uh, with another um, U.S. self-funded employer, uh, Jack Norton from Blue Lake Casino, who's an MTA member, traveling over to France Surgery, who is a member, um, to send one of their employees over there for care. So we're always working to promote and move forward the industry and get positive coverage for it. Um, you know, uh, you know, we have a lot of different distribution channels from medicaltourism.com, which is our consumer portal, to Medical Tourism City, which is our social network. If you're not a member, I encourage you to join. We've got over 3,000 uh, people in the medical tourism industry that you can connect and network with. Um, you know, we publish the Medical Tourism magazine. And then on the right-hand side there, we have our destination guides. And we're excited that we recently came out with our Taiwan destination guide. Um, and this is like a Fromers or Fodors type of travel guide for consumers in health and wellness and medical tourism. And then we put them on um, Amazon and Kindle. And uh, we also put them on medicaltourism.com for free to encourage more patients to travel for care. And through medicaltourism.com, we get thousands of uh, patient leads every year. We now, I'm excited to say we reach about, um, through our, all our distribution channels and partnerships, we reach about 1.5 million healthcare, um, insurance, and HR professionals all around the world. Um, we actually have now, we've reached a, a mile marker a couple of weeks, weeks ago, where we now reach about 500,000 members in about 30 different groups on LinkedIn that we manage, and we have thousands coming in each week. So we're really excited about that and using that to really educate people during the year and then to drive some of those key stakeholders to our conference. Um, and, you know, I, I think uh, one of the highlight, one of our members uh, here, St. Lucia Consulting, um, who's been coming to our conference for several years, um, you know, one of the, the quote at the bottom from uh, the founder was, being a member of the MTA has allowed uh, direct contact with any medical facility in the world. So if, for those of you who aren't aware with St. Lucia Consulting, they're really the most serious outbound uh, medical tourism facilitator out of China. Um, you know, sending uh, hundreds of patients for real, really high volume on, on high cost procedures. Um, and they just raised uh, $10 million uh, investment to really grow. So there's going to be some really rapid growth out of China through St. Lucia Consulting. And we have several other really quality members out of China. Um, we rolled out uh, this year our elite membership. Um, which allows a uh, special level of access where you get access to go on healthcare trade missions with us, customized strategic and action plans, speaking opportunities at our global event, um, patient and buyer leads um, throughout the year where you get patient leads on a consistent basis and buyer leads and um, special discounts on some of our technology platforms. So for those of you who aren't aware, I know we're going to be talking about our annual conference, but we also do conferences and workshops around the world that you guys can participate in. Um, we just finished our big Asia conference, the World Medical Tourism Asia conference, which was at the end of June in Taipei, which we had almost 800 participants um, and, uh, you know, 60 international participants from different parts of the world, uh, really successful then focusing just on Asia, Asia healthcare. We had an event in the country of Georgia um, that we did, uh, Portugal. Um, we just did one in Spain recently. 
Uh, we just did one in Mexico, and we're doing them all over the world. We have some planned in Africa for this coming year. Uh, I'm sorry, not this coming year, in the next couple of months uh, at the end of the fall. So um, and then now we'll move on to the slide on the 7th World Medical Tourism Conference. And this is a picture of our packed exhibit hall and some of our packed sessions. So, you know, I'm, you know, a big believer that, you know, in business, the way you do business today is building relationships and connections and building trust. And in medical tourism, it's about what I call healthcare trust. You're not going to simply pick up the phone and call someone and they're going to send you patients. You're not going to send them an email and, you know, you're, they're just going to send you patients. You've got to build a relationship with them. And this is what really our conference is all about. And when I was mentioning before Blue Lake Casino sending an employee over to France through France Surgery for Medical Tourism, that was a connection that happened at our conference. That's how business is done. Um, because sometimes in, medical, in the medical tourism industry, you know, people are mistaken that patients are just going to, if they open their doors to medical tourism, patients are going to come, facilitators, buyers are going to send them patients. Is no, you have to actively go out and promote and, and, and create those connections. And it's important not just to do it once. If you've got to do it continuously. Um, you've got to continuously have a brand and continuously build relationships. You know, we had at our conference a few years ago a hospital that met one facilitator, and they got 500 patients that year um, for around, it was around $10,000 a procedure. So almost $5 million, more than $5 million. Um, that would be times 12 months, about six, uh, you know, so, so five to six million dollars in revenue off of one medical procedure. And the medical director of the hospital then said, well, we've got it made. Everybody knows who we are. We're starting to make a lot of money. And they stopped everything from marketing to travel to going to conferences. And then slowly their medical tourism volume started to, to fall because we're in such a competitive industry now. Um, there are more hospitals than ever. Um, and so you have more competition, so you have to build a relationship with someone and then keep it and keep your competition away from it. But also, more importantly than that, there are new buyers coming into this industry every single day. Just like uh, I was mentioning, like St. Lucian, China, from outbound from China, um, there are new facilitators, new insurance companies, new employers every day that emerge that want to do medical tourism. And it doesn't matter how big your hospital is or how well you think you're known in the industry, they have no idea who you are. So whoever they're going to meet and they're going to build a relationship at the conference, that's who they're going to do business with. And you're going to see continuously over the next 12 to 24 months, I think more of a ramping up of new bu these new buyers continuing to come into the industry. If we look at the U.S. insurance industry as an example, um, because integrated within the Medical Tourism Conference is actually the biggest U.S. insurance and benefits conference for HR and insurance executives, um, almost 95% of large employers are, have a self-funded health plan where they're paying their own medical expenses. And so what that means is you have, in the U.S., tens of thousands of new buyers, and then you have a tremendous amount of insurance agents you know, 50,000, 100,000, you know, health insurance agents, CPAs around the country, brokers, consultants. So there are always going to be a new flow of these employers, these agents, these brokers into the industry at our show, and you need to be there. It's not like there's five players and you negotiate a deal with five players and you're done. There's just a constant stream, and so you have to kind of always uh, be vigilant. So why have we moved to Washington, D.C. for our conference? We're really excited to move to Washington, D.C. Um, I'm really happy because I know the weather is going to be beautiful. It's one of the prettiest times uh, to be in there with the trees blooming and, and very cool, cool and nice weather. But Washington, D.C. is one of the hubs of international power. Um, you know, it's where all the embassies and consuls are, um, so it allows to have a tremendous amount of government participation all the national trade associations and big players in insurance and healthcare have offices or are headquartered in Washington, D.C. because it's a seat of power in the U.S. So it's going to allow us to bring a lot more influential players um, and a lot more participation from before. And D.C., if you're not familiar with D.C., it's one of the world's most talked about destinations and one of the top tourism destinations. Um, and I wish I had some pictures here if you haven't been to D.C., but there's a tremendous amount of national monuments and history and it's just one of, you know, it's one of my favorite places for tourism. Um, so event highlights. Some of you, um, you know, might be familiar with this. Um, some of you may not, but we, you know, we, we will have, you know, anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 attendees from over 100 countries. 
um, over 100 speakers, thousands of one-on-one -on -one networking meetings, um, industry forums and executive summits, and I'll go into those in a little while. Um, and we rolled out some um, new benefits this year, and I hope you can see the banner on the bottom that actually um, you know, shows it, but uh, you know, with guaranteed networking meetings for sponsors at a certain level, where you can get up to 15 guaranteed uh, networking meetings, uh, buyer, buyer leads during the year, and also uh, MTA members can receive patient leads during the year. Oh, here's, uh, here's the, um, the slide. So depending on your sponsorship level, um, you'll see the guaranteed networking meetings and the guaranteed buyer leads. Um, so we bring in global buyers of healthcare from all over the world, insurance professionals, companies, facilitators, employers, governments, ministries of health, referring physicians, and hospitals. And everything is changing in international healthcare. Um, you know, it's, it's changing quite significantly. Um, and what I mean by that is in international insurance companies and ministries of health who are responsible for spending billions of dollars in medical tourism, they're reevaluating where they send patients. Um, and that can be due to many factors. Um, one of the most important ones is service delivery. They're not happy with the service that they're getting. Um, they're not, you know, they feel they're not getting great customer service and patient experience. Price sensitivity, um, they're not happy with the price that's being charged, um, and they're looking at negotiating new prices, and there's new hospitals being built. Um, and so it's important to really connect and develop relationships um, as, as this whole shift happens in the marketplace, because there is, there is really disruption going on right now, um, and that's going to continue over the next couple of years. Um, so, I was mentioning before that the World Medical Tourism Congress is integrated with the Employer Healthcare and Benefits Congress, um, and these are just some logos of some of the companies that participate and speak at the EHBC. The EHBC is where all the national employers come to present and do case studies. You'll see from IBM, LinkedIn, HP, L.L. Bean, Chipotle, Walgreens, McDonald's, um, NASA, Home Depot. It's where everybody comes to learn what's happening that's innovative in the U.S. insurance industry and what employers are doing to really lower costs and improve quality and outcomes for their employees. And within the Employer Healthcare and Benefits Congress, I think it's important to know the different conferences within it. So you've got the Healthcare Reform Conference, which many of you guys know is Obamacare. So it's the only event in the country that's just focused on healthcare reform with support from the administration where we get all the senior administration uh, people from Health and Human Services, IRS, DOL to come out and speak on health care reform. Um, and so, you know, that's important because you're getting all the senior leadership um, uh, that are dealing with the cost of the Affordable Care Act. And, you know, to be very clear, costs are going up under the Affordable Care Act. Um, you've got the Corporate Wellness Conference, um, employers trying to focus on the health and wellness of their employees, the Voluntary Benefits Conference, um, a self-funding conference, so as I said before, the majority of employers in the U.S. all are self-funded. They're not working with a fully insured carrier, so it's on them. They can make their own decision to implement medical tourism um, instantly because it's the money that they save goes into their own pocket. Um, the Global Benefits Conference, which brings in multinational employers and multinational insurance companies from all over the world, and it's the official event of the Global Benefits Association. We have the Health Insurance Exchange Conference, um, a healthcare reform benefits and technology conference, um, corporate fitness and nutrition conference, and we rolled out an M Health conference this year, um, really focusing on, on the mobile health and technology, specifically in the area of medical tourism, um, you know, how uh, patients can communicate through telemedicine um, to, re you know, remote doctors, how um, patients can be, can be given mobile health um, technology so that it helps keep them out of the hospital and monitors them, um, global travel insurance, and then the leadership. Um, so some of the speakers this year for the World uh, Medical Tourism and Global Healthcare Congress, we've got uh, excited to have Mac Boehner, the CEO of Bowman Grad International Hospital. Um, you know, so some of the feedback uh, you know, uh, that we got is we want to hear amazing case studies of hospitals that have really nailed it and are doing really successful uh, medical tourism business, and so we um, invited Mac from uh, from Bumengrad to come present this year. So he's going to be doing a one-hour case study on Bumengrad's successful model in medical tourism. And I know everyone really looks up to Bumengrad, so it's really going to be great for that presentation. 
We have Jose Casada, the Senior Director for Global Clinical Operations at Cigna, one of the largest health insurance companies in the world. Um, we have uh, Dr. Uh, David uh, Samadhi, who is Chairman of uh, Urology and Chief of Robotic Surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital. Um, we've got, uh, you know, the Ambassador for Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we've got Leila al um former uh, CEO of Health Policy and Strategy Sector for Dubai Health Authority. We've got the Health Attaché for the Saudi, uh, Saudi Government and Health Mission in Washington, D.C. Um, and we have, you know, almost 100 other speakers. So I really encourage you to go to the, um, to go to the conference website, medicaltourismcongress.com, and look at the agenda and look at the speakers because we really build out an amazing educational track. We do business development. We do marketing. We bring in some of the top New York Times best-selling authors and leaders around the world who are experts at marketing or business development or transforming your company to really inspire you and show you how to succeed. Um, and, uh, and and really take your business to the next level. And then we have a lot of case studies and different breakouts on different topics. Um, the seventh, uh, so also some of these are some of our sponsors, um, Terra, Mexico, Colombia, Fortis in India, um, you know, Tenant, uh, Argentina, the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Baja, California, Bahamas Medical Center, Poland, Medical Korea, uh, we got China, Dominican Republic, UC San Diego, um, you know, so really some really diverse and great um, exhibitors and sponsors. And for the, you know, most of you should be aware if you came last year, but uh, if you weren't, you know, we created a strategic partnership with Bupa, who is, uh, you know, really I think the largest international health insurer in the country, um, where a lot of their policies actually allow people to travel for their care. They have over 14 million customers in more than 190 countries, and we rolled it out last year through a multi-year agreement having a BUPA's Global Provider Summit focused on um, building out uh, centers of excellence to be able to refer patients to in the future as an insurance company. It was really successful last year. So we have, um, we, we, during the year, we make a tremendous amount of, um, of uh, initiatives and projects to create long-term strategies and partnerships with other organizations that are really influential in health insurance and healthcare and the referral of patients. And we built up, we built up over the years, you know, just really great relationships with all the senior buyers um, in, in healthcare and insurance throughout the world, from the ministries of health to the insurance companies to the referring hospitals. And here in the U.S. market, for example, um, because it's a great opportunity with our conference with the U.S. market, you know, I was the first person in the U.S. back in the early 2000s to implement medical tourism into self-funded and fully insured plans. And I've been in that industry for a very long time and have a lot of relationships with all the senior agents, employers, uh, brokers, consultants, CPAs, and have really spent the last, you know, eight years transforming the U.S. and educating everyone to adopt medical tourism. Um, so also excited to announce something we're doing at our conference, and it's part of a new strategic partnership that we just launched, and that is with Escape Artists, which is the, uh, really the top uh, portal for um, and website and organizations for North Americans, Americans, and Canadians um, who are retired overseas or, or who are planning to retire. So you're talking about millions of people um, you know, that use Escape Artist sites every year, and we have uh, created an exclusive long-term uh, relationship with them to um, build out a uh, medical tourism, a whole educational program and portal for all their members to be able to um, do medical tourism, connect with hospitals and facilitators from around the world. And also this year, we're, we're starting it off with a launch at our conference of a live patient webcast um, where we're going to um, you know, get over, you know, potentially 500 to 1,000 uh, patients who are interested in medical tourism, and we're going to have like a one to two hour live webcast to them from the exhibit hall and having different presenters come present on, um, you, know, what, you know, medical tourism, certain procedures, all those things. So there's going to be this live webcast where they're going to be pre-qualified potential patients, and uh, which is going to be kind of exciting. And then next year, um, we're going to actually partner for doing a, um, uh, a live event and having an actual consumer day um, within our show when we move it to Orlando uh, next year in September. So we're really excited about 
our partnership with Escape Artists, and we think this is going to bring a tremendous amount of new patients into the industry, um, you know, traveling for care, and really take help take our industry to the next level. Um, also excited to uh, share, we um, have created a strategic partnership with the HR Professionals Association. Um, they're the one of the biggest social media influencers in the world for HR. Um, so they have almost 200,000 HR members from around the world in their LinkedIn group. Um, and they're giving out um, some free passes to their members to attend our medical tourism conference this year. Um, and we're going to be doing medical tours and education to all their members um, starting after our conference. And then for our 2015 conference, we're going to be giving out actually free passes to their almost 200,000 members to come to our medical tourism conference in Orlando next year to really learn about medical tourism. Um, and to adopt it. So we're really excited about that. Um, another great partnership. So after this partnership, I think you will see that this was a busy year for the MTA because um, we're really, you know, fighting hard to really connect people from a B2B connection side and really help advance the industry. So we also created a strategic partnership with the International Luxury Hotel Association. So they are also um, the nonprofit trade association that is um, once again, one of the most influential social media players and influencers in luxury hotels around the world, and they have almost 200,000 members. Um, uh, I think it's about 198,000, 199,000 now in their LinkedIn group. So they are actually hosting their first VIP event within our conference this year in DC. Um, that's going to be uh, September 22nd and 23rd, and their attendees are going to mix in with ours. So what this does is this is going to open up in a couple areas. Is one, there's luxury medical tourism, um, and that includes obviously you know people with money traveling for medical tourism or traveling for health and wellness, um, you know because they have money and they want that special experience. So this is going to start bringing in luxury travel agents um, who will be a whole new type of buyer for our industry, and then it'll also bring in the hotels that are involved in the aftercare for medical tourism patients. Um, so we're really excited about this because it's, it's, it's a smaller VIP event this year, and then it's going to roll out into a much larger conference um, you know, next year and allow a, a whole new level of interaction that people haven't had at our conference before. Um, also, super excited, um, I would say this is one of the, the best things this year, is uh, you know the Medical Tourism Association, You know, we just signed a five-year agreement with the Organization of American States um, to host their non-communicable disease conference within our Medical Tourism Association annual ministerial summit each year. Um, so this will, this will take place starting next year at our um, 2015 September Orlando conference. Um, but there's already there's 37 states in the OES, um, and this is really going to bring um, some senior leadership to the ministerial summit focused on one of those important things, which is NCD. Um, and so, if you're not aware with our about a ministerial summit, it's an invite-only summit um, that uh, actually we bring in ministers of health, tourism, ex economic development, other government officials, all to listen to presentations about what's going on in medical tourism and health and wellness, and then you know for the ability for them to connect um, and actually you know do you know collaboration and business. So I remember years ago when I sat. Deputy Minister of Health for the United Arab Emirates with the Deputy Minister of Health of South Korea had a table, and in five minutes it had been worked out that Korea would send doctors to um, uh, Dubai to train Dubai uh, doctors. Dubai doctors would go to Korea to get trained, and you know eventually Korean hospitals would build hospitals in um, Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, and it's all happened. And so it's amazing to see that really high level of collaboration that can happen. Um, and this is just a, uh, you know, some pictures of some of the countries that um, uh, attend our ministerial summit. It's really from all over the world. Hopefully you can make that out. It's not too small on your screen. We also have a medical director summit. So if you have a medical director, they can come attend this summit. And um, if they're a medical director of a hospital, then they can actually get a free pass to it. And um, you know, these are our speakers this year. It brings in medical directors of insurance companies, um, employers, and also of hospitals. And so we have uh, Dr. Bruce Rogan, Chief Medical Officer for the Cleveland Clinic, um, who's coming to uh, speak this year. We've got um, um, Gertrude's Children's Hospital in Kenya. Um, we have Gordon coming to speak, who's the CEO. 
Um, we also have or cited uh, the Deputy Medical Director, Dr. Dean Smith from the U.S. Department of State. So really high level major players um, of, of medical directors. So it's a really great event to really learn about um, what's going on from the medical director standpoint, challenges, issues, obstacles, opportunities. Um, we also have the MTA University. And, um, you know, and through that you can get certified at our conference as a certified medical tourism professional. And we've also uh, rolled out um, our medical tourism marketing professionals. So one is um, the CMTP is all about um, you know, how you service the patient, how you deal with the patient, privacy, quality, aftercare, um, continuation of care, all these different things. And then you have the medical tourism marketing professional, which is all about best practices in marketing medical tourism. How do you succeed, convert more patients, increase your business. Um, so the CMCP has, uh, you know, multiple courses, uh, you know, besides doing it at the conference, which will happen on Wednesday, you can also do it um, online. And it's um, $1,500 to go to online or a conference. If you're already coming to the conference for an additional $500, so you can get certified. Um, so you've got introduction to medical tourism, medical tourism facilitation, the importance of the patient experience, integrating medical tourism into your business plan, creating your marketing plan, B2B marketing. Uh, I'm sorry, now I'm jumping into um, uh, MTMB. So this isn't all the courses. This is just a generalization of the course. But if you go to your, our website, you'll have a detailed outline of the course. And then you've got the MTMP, which is about B2B marketing, B2C marketing, healthcare consumer marketing, online marketing and social media, um, word of mouth marketing, and intro to medical tourism marketing. Um, I was already mentioning earlier membership in the MTA. Um, you know, there's some really great benefits that we've added this year, so, uh, you know, from the guaranteed patient and buyer leads. Um, to being able to network to using our online resource center to special discounts um, and connections and then you have regular membership and then elite membership. We also have CMEs at our conference, Continuing Medical Education Credits, um, that we partner with the University of Miami with. So we launched several years ago the first CMEs in medical tourism in the world and we continue to do those every year at our conference focused on you know, uh, pre-travel and pre-operative and post-travel and post-operative patient care to decrease risk and improve tr treatment outcomes, all to engage the primary care physicians. So it's a great way for referrals, too. Um, we have special interest forums that are invite only from, obviously, our we have an uh, MTA advisory board meeting. Um, we've got a medical education committee meeting, um, U.S. Meets Emerging Markets Forum that you can uh, request an invite for, Destination Health Forum, um, Export Health Forum, um, we have then we have regional forums, our European forum, Asian forum, Latin American, Middle East, U.S., Caribbean, and African. So, um, with these forums, if you have not been to our conference, or if you have and you missed out on them, they're one of the best benefits of the conference. Um, you're talking about small groups of people, anywhere from eight to thirty, um, sitting around and really networking. Um, not, not, not as much networking, but discussing issues. So I moderated um, the facilitator forum last year. And uh, with the facilitator forum, it's all about challenge and obstacles for facilitators and how we need to set standards and how we need to move forward in the industry. So we had, it was a packed room of like 30 to 40 people. And it was the first time facilitators sat around and discussed all the issues. Um, and, and so it really helped to move forward the industry as to how things need to change Letting facilitators share, and this is just below this, the medical tourism facilitator form, letting the facilitators share what challenges are they having and how, did, how does their peer or colleague deal with that? How do they overcome it? And it also helped foster some partnerships. Um, so they're really amazing and powerful behind the scenes events that you can participate in that come in on a first come, first serve basis. Um, we also have a hospitality medical tourism forum, opportunities for insurance agents in medical tourism, and a healthcare provider forum. Um, so definitely encourage you to participate and to get your, you know, invite now for the forum. Um, our networking platform is open. Um, you know, we can schedule one-on-one -on -one networking meetings at the conference. I definitely really recommend that you use this. It's an amazing tool. Um, you know, we've had people, um, you know, like we have one, you, you can use it as an attendee or as a sponsor, but we had one sponsor who scheduled literally 60 one-on-one -on -one networking meetings just through the software alone besides the traffic. Um, so you can really use this to the next level. And our event is really the only medical tourism event in the world that really qualifies buyers. 
Um, you know, and, and, there, and there's two things to that. Is one, we know all the buyers because we're, we're working all over the world. And we know who are serious buyers and we know who are not buyers. And so we have a very strict process as to how we approve a buyer and to make sure they're legitimate, that they're sending patients overseas, um, that they have a history, that they're coming specifically to come network and do business so that they can participate in our hosted buyers program where they get either, a, you know, it could be a free pass, free airfare, free hotel, um, you know, and, and if they're, they do not qualify, meaning they're not sending patients overseas, um, they're not actually a buyer, they're a consultant trying to come sell services to hospitals, they are not, a, they, you know, they don't qualify for that program. So we take that really, really seriously. And, and um, because we have so many partnerships with insurance companies, with employers, with agents and brokers, um, we're able to really pull in a lot of buyers from around the world. Our partnerships with the Global Benefits Association, with the Employer Healthcare and Benefits Congress. And so this is really a very unique experience that there's nothing else like it. You know, um, a lot of the other, you know, smaller events that get put on um, out there, you might have 50 to, you know, 100 people and not a lot of buyers. So this is, a, you know, a place that I feel you can come and in two to three days accomplish what would take you years to do business in. And that networking platform is a key area. So if you haven't built your profile, think of it as LinkedIn for the conference. You build your profile, and then you reach out and you start messaging people. I'm seeing the people that are starting to be active in the system. Don't wait till the last minute because people might have their schedules booked. And with that networking app, there's a conference app, so you can pick all the sessions you want to attend and then schedule in your networking meetings so you have a whole complete um, agenda. So, um, you know, and then if you're a sponsor and you're on this call, please make sure to set up your visual booth and build your brand because you're able to upload videos, photos, client testimonials, marketing te uh, material, and really utilize it to the next level. Um, and it's really easy, but we have some videos and uh, we've done some webcasts we're going to refer you to to look at how you can actually make that happen. Um, also, um, one of the main things too is, you know, we always try to make it a very interactive exhibit hall experience. Um, so within the exhibit hall, um, we have a lot of fun and activities. We have a wellness market. This year we have an M Health Pavilion. Um, if you've participated before, <clears throat> we have like, you know, the benefits that are buyer's bingo, where buyers have to walk around and attend and network um, uh, with, uh, with exhibitors. Um, one thing I, I forgot to mention with our patient webcast with escape artists, um, you can actually sponsor that. So if you're on the call and you're on in medical tourism, you're running a hospital or a business, you can actually sponsor and be one of the speakers on that live webcast after that like 500 to 1,000 patients that are going to come, um, that's going to happen at the conference. So back to the exhibit hall. So within the exhibit hall, we also have um, a treasure key, uh, tre I'm sorry, treasure key chest contest program. And everybody registration gets these um, keys that go to tre uh, treasure chest. And then basically they're located around the hall and they have prizes and giveaways in them and you get to go and try and see if your key is that magical key to unlock it. This is how we try to make it fun and engage and get people to go around and connect. Um, I think one of the things that's really special about our conference is it's always been built upon um, people coming to connect, collaborate, share, and share ideas. And because of that, you'll find it's, people are very open. Um, to meeting other people, um, you know, to sharing what they're doing that's working, that's not working, and to creating new business um, opportunities. So I think it's a really positive, and, and, and you know, that's you know, um, you know, that's really I think a benefit of the type of attendees that come to our conference. They're very serious, but they're very friendly, and they want to meet and connect. Um, so with that, for any of you who uh, you know maybe have not registered for the conference yet. Um, you know, please feel free, uh, you know, we have a special right now um, for those on the webcast. It's uh, $1,500 for registering, and you can use the code EBEXTEND, which stands for Early Bird, uh, EBEXTEND, and use it at medicaltourismcongress.com. And if you haven't booked your room yet, please book your room right away. So the, the actual, this is going to be probably our biggest year yet, so the conference hotel itself, the rooms are sold out. Um, but there's Alexandria, Virginia, which is literally right across the bridge um, uh, from, uh, from the hotel. So it's, it's a river in between, and you cross the bridge. It's like a five-minute taxi ride. But there's a lot of hotels in Alexandria, Virginia, but I highly suggest you book them um, before those sell out too. So um, for those of you who are going to be at the conference, I really look forward to uh, you know, seeing you and connecting with you. 
you know, one of the things I, I uh, you know, I think I briefly mentioned is, you know, we launched chapters of our association this year. We rolled out one in Korea. Um, we're, um, uh, have five other under consideration. So we're creating a lot of partnerships and collaboration in different countries. And there's a lot of different ways that you can work with us and engage with us for, for um, education. Um, you know, as I said, we're now reaching 1.5 million, uh, you know, people around the world. We're doing a lot of webcasts. Um, white papers, workshops, all around the world and online, um, and, uh, and really have some amazing, uh, you know, solutions, um, you know, for the people in the industry to help connect them and help them move forward with medical tourism. Um, so um, with that, I'm just going to see if there were any questions, if anyone typed any questions um, in this. Uh, so we're going to make this uh, PowerPoint and webcast available later. Um, I know we're kind of running out of a, a little time here, and I know um, I think that uh, Daniel on my team was going to work on uh, putting on, uh, making sure you guys can put watch the video if you haven't seen it. It's a really great video. Um, you know, last year we had we put together a whole piece with Diane Sawyer and Nightline on um, a, a member of our association, HSM, who's a manufacturing company in North Carolina over the past five years sending 250 employees overseas and spending $10 million um, on medical tourism outbound out of the U.S. Um, and it was really, I think, a great example of U.S. self-funded employers really empowered and doing medical tourism. So really doing it and doing it successfully and changing the corporate culture within their company. And then <clears throat> this uh, CBS News story was another one we just put together. Um, and it was the story of another, uh, you know, uh, MTA member sending, you know, um, uh, an employee overseas for a really successful outcome uh, to, to France. Um, by the way, if any of you have any questions, you know, feel free to send me an email. It's John, J-O-N, at medicaltourismassociation.com, or you can call us. Our, our phone number in the U.S. here is 561-791-2000. Um, um, so feel free to reach out. Uh, I vote, I'm just going to end up hitting play. I don't know if you're supposed to hit play or I am, but I'm going to hit play for those of you who haven't seen it so you can watch it. Um, and then if there's any, uh, any other questions, just feel free to follow up with us afterwards. So thank you so much for coming on the call. For those of you going to be in D.C., I really look forward to seeing you. Um, and stop by the MT booth and learn all about our new benefits because we've totally revamped um, and, uh, and changed all the types of benefits that our members can get, really helping a lot on um, really that be business development side, patient lead, buyer leads, connections, and things like that. Thank you very much. Well, here's a story on Bastille Day. Imagine a three-week vacation in France. Great restaurants, a chauffeur, the Eiffel Tower, and you don't pay a dime. In fact, you come home with more money in your pocket. Andrea Borba on the new health care trend that sent one Northern California guy packing. Along the Pacific Coast in Humboldt County, you'll find the Blue Lake Casino Hotel. Owned by the Blue Lake Rancheria Tribe, folks come here to gamble. But for tribal employee Bruce Ryan, he took a chance that paid off big. The construction manager needed surgery for a debilitating rotator cuff injury. He could have gone to Stanford Medical Center, but... No, we went to France, to Toulouse, France, and did it. <laughs> It was great. That's right. His surgical odyssey began right here at the International Terminal at SFO. The Rancheria's health care plan gives employees the option to travel abroad for treatment. Why? We do have high quality care, but then also at the same time, we also have the, uh, the most expensive care in the world. Jack Norshin runs the health plan and is seeing the cost of health care skyrocket for his employees. To keep costs down, he added the medical travel option. Well, you have to look for creative approaches. The plan provided Ryan with two round trip tickets to France, as well as a chauffeured car and a translator. You should come to France. And a medical facilitator, France Surgeries, Karine Hilaire. We never leave our patient alone. It paid for a top surgeon at an approved private clinic, a physical therapist, 21 days at a hotel, sightseeing tours, as well as all meals. The food in Toulouse was out of this world. We ate like royalty. Ryan did not pay a single dime. $7,000 worth of deductibles and co-pays were waived. So, with all of these goodies, what did the tribe actually save? About $12,000. And that's not all. 10% of the savings, $1,200, went directly into Ryan's 401k plan. That's pretty astonishing. And the cost savings can be anywhere from 
10% to 75%. Renee Marie Stefano is the president of the Medical Tourism Association. She says American hospitals should watch out. Employers are looking for excellent care at a lower cost, and they're finding it abroad. Because of the increased competition, they're going to have to become more price sensitive. As for Ryan, he's recovered ahead of schedule. His California doctor is impressed. They did an excellent job. Yeah, without just really, really excellent job. In Blue Lake, Andrea Borba, KPIX 5. An HR rep at a big insurance group tells us expect to see more Fortune 500 companies add medical travel like this to their benefits packages. The key to making it work, though, is to offer incentives like the tribe offered Bruce. The conference this year has been extremely important. This is my third conference and I came by myself the first time and this time I have six employees with me and we're all at different levels. You can touch many, many people and from different backgrounds and from people who are only starting in this business to people who have been here for the past five years. The last two days of learning uh, wouldn't have happened by going on Google or doing doing days and days of research. Uh, as you can imagine, trying to operate on a worldwide scale, there's just not a feasible way to travel to every place that you need to travel. So it's so nice to have everybody in one spot. It's a perfect place to meet people uh, from all over the world who are interested in medicine. And I'm sure that no matter what they did, they would find some commonality. I've been very impressed with these speakers and not only the presentation and the quality of the speakers themselves, but also the content. This is our first year. We're a startup company, and so we're really excited for the opportunity to be here. And this has been a, a great networking opportunity. The networking was just fantastic. Uh, there was a cross-section of American companies, European companies, uh, global companies. And the experience was awesome. Uh, we have uh, a lot of contacts from uh, buyers from all, all around the world. We just sat here in our very beautiful booth and people will come directly to us of all types. The exhibitors are as interested in meeting each other as the participants are in meeting each other. In this business you need to keep growing not only on the economical side of your business but in the intellectual side of your business also. I would say that there's actually no other uh, conference like this right now going on in the world. Um, you've got the business element, you have the delivery side, you have the insurance side, the education side. Whereas all the other conferences that we're involved with are usually research, and this is all about actually providing the service. If you're going to be involved in this industry, you need to be involved in the conference because this really is the founding organization that, that has helped the industry develop to where it is today. I would encourage anybody to come because you would be visible to everybody in the whole wide world. If you're serious about medical tourism, and I mean if you're really serious, then better be here, otherwise you're not serious. Well, my God, uh, we're going to Washington. Uh, well, there goes Washington. <laughs> we'll change it forever.